Pitch is hit foul on the third base side. It stays two and two. With today's crowd, the Braves will finish just shy of 2.6 million in regular season attendance. That'll be up among the leaders in the major leagues, but still down some from what the Braves were averaging the two previous seasons. Two and two on Lansing. Just off the inside corner. Full count now, three and two. Remember that number's down some, too, because the Braves missed nine scheduled right. home games. So uh, even on this schedule, the Braves would have drawn right at three million. Runner going on the 3-2 pitch. The let up is high and away. Ball four. And the Expos have runners. First and second with one out for Mark Rizalenic. That pitch right there and not so much the pitch, but that spot where it was thrown right there is the one thing that the critics of Kent Merker keep bringing up. His changeup is his second best pitch. You're early in the ball game. It's a 3-2 count. He has dominated three hitters already with the fastball, striking him out, and then to come back and throw it 3-2 to a guy who is not really a power hitter, I think he gets more criticism for that than anything else. Fastball foul back, and you can see by the swings the Expos have had against his fastball, if they have made contact, the foul balls, have, they've all swung late. Yes. Foul balls have all been hit off to the right. The base hit that Cordero got was a jam shot, and all he was able to do was muscle it in the center field. So he has not a good fastball. He has an overpowering fastball. And he's doing him a favor by throwing the change up in situations where he could dominate with his fastball. Here's the 0-1 on the way, and there's another one for a strike. Nothing in two. Rizalonic, 261 for the year. Had a 10-game hitting streak snapped here last night. Expo's very high on this youngster. Apparently the best defensive shortstop in the organization. That's what we hear from people who travel with the organization or close to it. The runners lead Lansing from first, Cordero from second. And the 0-2 is high and away. One ball, two strikes. Out number four for Kent Merker. And out number two here on the top of the second. That may have been the changeup, but that's a good spot for it. You, it's one and two. You have a chance to make a pitch in the dirt, see if he'll chase it. There it is. It is down. Starts out looking like a strike. Greg Maddox will tell you he gets most of his strikeouts on changeup that are not strikes, but they start like they they look like they're going to be strikes. Three two, he doesn't throw it up and away and try to uh, he, he uses it in a spot where it can get him an out not get him in a jam now the catcher Tim Laker batting 230 with three home runs high and away one ball no strikes Merker four and two lifetime against Montreal there are your runners Lansing at first Cordero second pitch. Last ball for a strike. One ball, one strike. Here's the 1-1. One -one. Got the inside corner. And Merker ahead in the count on Laker. A ball and two strikes.
Here's the one two pitch just a little bit low two and two on Tim Laker pitcher Tavo Alvarez on deck. Again, Merker and Lopez having trouble getting together. Lakers steps out. That will lead to your ending up near the bottom of the division. Foul back. It stays two and two. Here's how good his fastball is. Lakers a dead high fastball hitter. Guess for it. Got it. Missed it. Still two and two. There's one of the rule changes that would be in effect today. Cold day like this, normally you can't go to your mouth on the mound, but on a cold day you're allowed to blow on your fist, try to increase the circulation. Again, the two-two and the changeup has popped up. Foul territory, Merker racing for it, so is Javi Lopez. Lopez over near the Braves on deck circle for the catch. And that'll do it for Montreal in a second. They get a couple of base runners, strand them both. We go to the bottom half of inning two with no score. No score as we go to the bottom half of the second inning. The first ball ceremony today, especially touching, it was scheduled to be thrown out by a youngster named Brian Burrell, who tragically died in an accident back in August. His favorite player, Braves pitcher Greg Maddox. And with Brian's family here today, Greg, Greg threw out the first ball and presented it to the parents of the late Brian Burrell. He was supposed to throw out the first ball, Pete, last year, the day that would have been the first home game after the strike ended. And then uh, it was rescheduled uh, for this year. And then, tragically, the family lost him in an automobile accident. So, again, Greg Maddox rising to the occasion. Fred McGriff leading off the second. He'll be followed by David Justice and then Javi Lopez. No score. One ball, no strikes. And that misses low, the count 2-0. Little chopper up the middle. Backhanded by Lansing is throw on to first in time. Lansing, a good defensive second baseman. He covers a lot of ground over there. And he'll make that play there according to the speed of the base runner. He backhanded that ball, came up, saw where Fred McGriff was, took his time, planted, and threw. If it had been somebody coming out of the batter's box in a little more of a hurry, he would have rushed it. He's a very heady second baseman. You know, you hear a lot about the defensive play of second baseman in the National League like Brett Boone and Mark Lemke and Craig Vigio. He's only made five errors all year at second. Here's Justice, 261, hit his 24th homer. In the opening game of this series, drills this one into shallow left center field. Cordero in for the catch. And Alvarez has retired five in a row. I was talking with some of the Montreal folks down about Tavo Alvarez before the game, and you'll understand this. He's one of those guys, they tell us, that you sometimes have to get on in, in between innings to give a little more effort. He mm -hmm. kind of, not, not lazy is not the correct word. He, he just kind of falls into an easygoing way of pitching sometimes where he's not using his arm as effectively as he can. And, and you know, when the, you have a tendency to do that, it might surprise you. It's when things are going just the way they are right now. Mm -hmm. Where ho-hum, he makes a pitch, gets a fly ball, and really does, he hasn't had to grind out anything. Javi Lopez at 319 for the year with 14 homers. Breaking ball strike, one ball, one strike. Might surprise you some of the people on this ball club. We got, we got something we want to show you. When you think about the home run ratios, who's hit the most per at bats, a couple of the guys in the top five might surprise you. Obviously, you know Fusco's going to be there at bats for every home run but look at Charlie O'Brien and Javi Lopez you and I've talked before about this you can make an argument for that tandem being high in the MVP ba balloting for this ball club the O'Brien Lopez tandem 
23 home runs between them. Add the home run by Eddie Perez. That's 24 home runs from your catching core. And a batting average somewhere in the neighborhood of 280. Maybe 70, 75 runs driven in. I guarantee you, anybody or almost any organization, if you say to them, catchers are going to hit you 290, 25 homers and drive you in 80 runs, they'll say, we'll take it, don't even play the season. A ball and two strikes. Another curveball, this one in the dirt, two and two. Good overhand curveball. His, his mechanics and his release point, the way he throws is so perfect for a downer curveball. Watch the elbow as he throws forward. It'll be up high. It's over the top. A little bit of a stiff front leg. It's full now. Three and two. And the motion of his arm carries it straight toward the ground in front of him. Doesn't pull across it. Very simple mechanic. Here's the three two on the way. He got him. Lopez out of there on strikes. That's the second strikeout for Alvarez. He is retired six in a row. We go to the top of the third. Still no score. Rising star right there, in my opinion, as far as pitching coaches in the National League are concerned, that's Joe Kerrigan. A lot of times, a good pitching coach won't go right to the pitcher. He'll go to the catcher, and that's what Joe Kerrigan is doing here with Tim Laker. You might wonder why with him on a roll, but uh, Pete told you before, sometimes you, you, they have to kind of light a firecracker under Alvarez, and he just wants to make sure that he and Laker are all agreeing that this is the way we want to keep doing it. And here is Tavo Alvarez to lead things off here in the third. Still looking for his first major league hit. He is 0 for 10. And takes the first one from Worker down low. Ball one. Oh. Two and nothing. The count now on Alvarez. strike he was taking all the way two and one Alvarez born in Mexico but played high school baseball in Tucson Arizona three and one now in Alvarez in the air Fairly deep right center field. David Justice drifting back makes the catch. One gone. Now we go back to the top of the order for the Expos and Rondell White, a strikeout victim in the first inning. A mismatch strikeout victim. Three fastballs in three good spots. and won the count on White from Gray, Georgia. He was the Georgia High School Player of the Year back in 1990. And set an Atlanta Fulton County Stadium for visiting tickets left on Friday night. Left 60. <laughs> Here's the 1-1. One -one. That's low, 2-1. Is that the biggest number you've ever heard left? No, Marquise Grissom had the biggest number when he was with Montreal coming back to Atlanta over 100 one night. Gee. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Did he go? No, says first base up Brian Gorman. The count 3-1 and one on Rondell White. The correction, 2-2 two two the count. Here's the 2-2 two two pitch. And down on strikes again. Now I was right the first time. It is three and two now. Scoreboard had it wrong. And Javi Lopez had to check because the scoreboard did have it two and two. Now it's three and two. Here's the three two pitch. And I think he went. He did. Rondell White could not check his swing on the off speed pitch. And that's five strikeouts now for Ken Merker. And that's out number two here in the top of the third. Good change up. Two and 
Two away, David Segui, the batter. He grounded out to short his first time up. No runs, one hit for the Expos. The Braves have gone six up and six down. And the count of ball and no strikes on Segui. Our next game is Tuesday night. John Smoltz against Paul Quantrill as the Braves head north to Philadelphia. Two and the count. We'll have that game on TBS, but then uh, the next time we will see you on TBS will be next Saturday from New York. It'll be a Saturday afternoon game. Right. The Braves and the Phillies on Sports South on Wednesday, and then the Baseball Network on Friday as we go to New York. Here's the 2-0 pitch, and it's popped up foul territory, first base side. Fred McGriff over near the Atlanta dugout will not have enough room. It rattles around in there. And the count goes to two and one on Segui. Day like this, you got to designate one guy with a glove to be in charge and protect people because a cold day, you're going to bundle up. You can't be jumping around to get out of the way of balls. One younger player has to protect the veteran. And it will be a younger player, a rookie. Here's the two one on the outside corner. Two and two now on David Segui. The 2-2 pitch on the way almost went fishing after that high fastball, but laid off. The count full now, 3-2. and two. You watch Greg Maddox's strategy. Maddox sometimes will throw you the fastball 2-2, two and two, try to get you to chase it. If you don't, it's to set up the 3-2. Sometimes Kent Merker gets himself in a jam trying to pitch like Greg Maddox. Here comes the 3-2 pitch. Ground ball in the left field. Base hit for Segui that time he made the pitch like Kent Merker just credit Segui with hitting what, what looked like a good fastball in a pretty good spot. I think sometimes there's a tendency, Pete, anytime something happens, like a hitter gets a hit, to place blame and instead of giving credit. These hitters are major league hitters too and so not every base hit is a bad pitch and not every out's a good pitch but in that case right there, just give Segui some credit for hitting a good pitch and doing what he does to hit 300. Here's Benitez who struck out his first time did not get the change up there at the count of one. Benito, just 23 years old. Out of San Juan, Puerto Rico. Another strike, the count 0 and 2. And he has proof, Don, that sometimes a young player, when he first signs, is going to struggle a little while. He had to play at the rookie league level for two years and really didn't light that league up, hitting 229 and 239. But it was his third year that things began to kick in for him. Was he a player who signed young? Let's see. He was 17 when he yeah, signed. See, yep. that, that happens a lot. Most 17-year-olds are still asking permission to use the car. And there's a guy in professional baseball. 0-2 oh the count. Segui the runner first. In the air, right center field. Devereaux and Justice converting. It'll be Devereaux making the catch. And that's it for the Expos in the third. Another good inning for Ken Merker. Gives up the base hit, but that's all. We go to the bottom half of inning three. Still no score. Want them? CBS has them. Movies for guys who like movies. One big, bad, in-your-face movie every Sunday night. Tonight, when Bert meets Sally, it's love in the fast lane. With the law hot on their trail. Bert Reynolds, Sally Field, and Jackie Gleason. Smokey and the Bandit. You want them? We got them. Movies for guys who like movies. 7 Eastern tonight. Only on CBS. 
This telecast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Atlanta National League Baseball Club. It is intended solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, retransmission of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Atlanta National League Baseball Club is prohibited. And please remember my admonitions to you. Do not discuss this game with anybody. Don't let anybody discuss it with you. And don't form any conclusion till the final out of the ninth inning. Mike Mordecai, first pitch swinging. One hopper to third. Barry. Over to first, Mordecai retired. One pitch, one out. Seven straight set down now by Alvarez. And that'll bring up Jeff Blauser. I don't know why I you, felt like you, that you, should be a part of the... You, you've been watching too much of another program. <laughs> I have never heard the word admonition until. First pitch to Blauser, fly ball right field and deep. Benitez back to the warning track. He's got enough room. And on two pitches, Alvarez has retired the first two Braves here in the bottom of the third, and that'll bring up the pitcher, Kent Merker. <laughs> Let's see if Merker goes up there thinking like a hitter or thinking like a pitcher. Now, normally a veteran hitter would say he's got two outs on two pitches hitter might uh, take a whack at it but a veteran pitcher is going to say hey wait a minute I'm not going to put him back to dug out that quickly they make me work longer that'll make you throw a strike I'm betting he takes a pitch he does and it's low ball one Merker 106 for the year he does have three doubles he's driven in five runs One and one the count. Here's the one one on the way. Try to lay a bunt down the third base side. Bunts it foul. The count one and two. He saw Barry playing deep. He tried to take advantage of it, but it went foul. One ball, two strikes. The one two pitch on the way and the breaking ball low and inside two and two. Outside corner Merker caught looking another one two three inning for Tavo Alvarez. That's his third strikeout and at the end of three complete no score here in Atlanta. No score after three. Before we begin the fourth, let's give you today's Aflac trivia question. Here it is. Who's the only left-handed hitter to hit 50 or more home runs in the National League in a single season? Haven't been that many 50 home run hitters, so think about it. We'll give you the answer bottom half. Fourth inning, here's Don. All right, Pete, thank you very much. Got ourselves a pitching duel, and Kent Merker has looked good to this point. Barry to lead it off, fouls it away, and it's 0-1. He struck out swinging his first time. Merker has five. Only one base on ball and a couple of singles. Breaking ball is upstairs, and it's one and one. Sometimes you see this happen late in the year as we run through some of the other early scores for you where you get a cool day, and it's, it's kind of a rejuvenation for pitchers, and you'll see some pitching dominate. Two and one to Barry. Sean Robert Barry out of Torrance, California. That's back into the crowd, and it's two and two. Barry was a first-round pick, 86, by the Kansas City Royals, so I'm sure our general manager, John Sherholt, very familiar with Sean Barry. Montreal got him in a trade that sent a couple of pitchers over to Kansas City. That happened mm, about three years ago. Two balls, two strikes. Cordero and Lansing to follow here in the top of the fourth inning. Oh. That'll run at full three and two. Barry's had a good year all the way around. Hit right at 300 for the first half, but you can see he's kicked it up an even bigger notch the second half. Shallow center field. There'll be a group of folks out there. Who wants it? Devereaux's going to take it. 
Notice something Mike Devereaux does when he catches a fly ball that you hardly ever see anymore? Two-handed Two every time. What a novel idea. You know, I wonder, I, I have uh, never really talked to him about it, but Devereaux plays on both sides, too. I wonder if you get a guy who plays some left, some right, and some center, I wonder which he would prefer, wonder which they prefer. I would guess center field might be the easiest. First pitch swinging, two hopper to Blouser. Second out in the inning. Most of the balls seeming like in center field come at you more directly, but you get a lot yeah, of Yeah, the ones in left and right are going to slice or hook depending on which position you're playing. Devereaux is one of those guys that, uh, good addition to a ball club, though. That, uh, in my mind, one of the key moves made this year. Well, all the scouts that we talked to say that the one thing that kept the Braves the first half of the year from being considered the team to beat was the, the lack of a deep bench. And the addition of Devereaux and Polonia changes all that. Here's Lansing. He's first pitch swinging. That's headed for the corner. Fair or foul. It is a fair ball, and that's a home run. That ball looked like it was foul until about the last two or three feet, then drifted back just over the fence and just into the screen for a home run. Lansing wasn't even sure. He waited by first for the call. That is the shortest possible home run you can hit here at Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. It bounced on the fence, off the foul pole, right down the line, 330 feet away. Watch this. Good pitch. It's only going to clear the fence by about an inch and then off the foul pole. That's all it takes. So we can tell you without turning the computer on the distance of that home run, 330 feet. One to nothing. Here's Mark Grizzolani. <laughs> That's a third hit for the Expos. And the 16th home run allowed by Kent Merker. One other number for you, the ninth of the year for Lansing. Other way, that's going to get out of play. A ball and a strike. See that, and there's a good example there of what we were talking about early. He had a good pitch. Went down and in and got a breaking ball that probably would not have been called a strike. Back our way and it's one and two. He stays alive. Thought he had swung and missed that. Still one and two. I'm sure John Smoltz and conditioning guru Frank Colts are down charting this ball game. I'll have to ask them if that was as good a pitch as it looked like. Opposite field, long run for Justice in the foul territory. The slide, and he can't get it. Good try, and this crowd showing their appreciation for an all-out effort. And he almost made a spectacular catch. Well, David always gives you the effort on balls hit in foul territory. We've seen him make a lot of catches like this in foul ground, even when he has that mound to contend with out there. Just couldn't quite come up with that one. Still one and two. pitch and it's two and two <laughs> high and out just a little bit outside <laughs> that's the Bob Euchre line right just, just a little, a little bit, bit high bit outside inside corner goes sit down strikeout number six for Merker but the Expos take the lead on one swing of uh, Mike Lansing's bat and there's the blooper pitch Bottom of the fourth, one to nothing expo. Expo's leading at one nothing. Before we begin the bottom of the fourth, let's answer today's Affleck trivia question, which was, who is the only left-handed hitter to hit 50 or more home runs in the National League in a season? Johnny Mize, the big cat, with 51 in 1947. Braves are still talking in the dugout about that home run, and Kent Merker was kind of diagramming 
maths and geometry and physics and he's right that ball was hooking until about the last six feet just kind of yep drifted back there's a tv baseball analyst in the making and tom glavin polonia to lead it off fouls it away and it's 0 and one they could have been discussing their golf game as well there that's true too glavin does no he plays uh right to left and that was a left to right that he was doing a run on three hits. Tabo Alvarez has set down nine in a row right at the second baseman. Ten in a row set down by Tabo Alvarez. For you folks who are interested in the Ryder Cup, the play golf play between the best of Europe and the best of the U.S., it is all even. 11 and a half points each. That's going to go right down to the end. Here's Mike Devereaux. Takes the first one downstairs. 1-0. and oh. David Justice, you remember, sliding on the warning track in foul territory. Getting a little repair job from Jeff Porter. Good curve off from Alvarez, and it's 1-1. One and one. Alvarez has a, a baseball history in his family. His father and his grandfather both played professionally. In the air, shallow left. Backpedaling is Gisolanic. In is Cordero, and it's Cordero who makes the play. Two gone, 11 in a row set down by Cesar Octavio Alvarez. And here comes Chipper Jones. And what is starting to happen more and more, yes, are the signs. And some of them have become very creative, but Chipper Jones is gathering, it's almost like a cult following. Uh, mostly young Braves fans here in the Atlanta area. Takes a first one for a strike. And the question keeps popping up. Who's going to be rookie of the year? Is it going to be Hideo Nomo or Chipper Jones? Curveball outside, one and one. Most people that you talk to seem to think that it might be Chipper Jones. You see his numbers. Hold that thought right there for a second. Those numbers, 261, 22, and 84. Back in 1988, Kurt Gibson won the MVP with 290, 25, and 76. Mm -hmm. So if it's good enough to win the MVP, then Chipper Jones got to be good enough to win the Rookie of the Year. On the ground is short. Could be 12 in a row. It is. Good starting for Alvarez. Braves come up empty again in the fourth inning. We have completed four. It's Montreal one. The Braves yet to score. Cold weather brings out the creativity, doesn't it? <laughs> that may be my favorite one of the year. Top of the fifth inning. Maxwell's lead at one to nothing as they come to bat. How much longer do I have to stand here like this, Mom? <laughs> <laughs> Laker, Alvarez, and White. First three do up. Pete Van Weeren, Don Sutton with you for three more outs. And Joe and Skip take you the rest of the way. No balls and a strike to the Expos catcher. Pop to his counterpart, Javi Lopez, in foul territory. First time up. There's a strike, and it's 0-2. Kyle Galima, our stat guru, sitting here eating ice cream in this freezing weather. Do you drink coffee in July, too, in the middle of the day? Just to get it back even? No <laughs> balls and two strikes. Merker and Javi Lopez having trouble getting together on the pitch. Still 0-2. This is a part of Fan Appreciation Weekend, and the Braves have, I think, really doubled their efforts this summer and gone really the extra mile to not only try to help salve the wounds from the work stoppage, that's upstairs 1 and 2, but I think to commemorate 30 years here in Atlanta. And this weekend, a part of it with a lot of prizes and some good promotions. There have been some great promotions. Merker wanted to call. 
And the fans have responded. We told you nine games were lopped off of the schedule. But even with that, the attendance figure this year is going to be the third best in their 30-year history here. So I think the Braves, top to bottom, have made the effort, and you fans have responded, too. That'll do it. That is strikeout number seven for Merker. So like Steve Avery did his couple of outings, Merker is rising to the occasion here as he prepares for postseason. See Lopez setting up inside. Borderline, but he got the call. When you're throwing strikes, you get the call. There's Alvarez. Hit a fly ball to right field. Hit it pretty deep. First time up, he is hitless in 11 tries. No balls and a strike. At the style of a hitter, doesn't he? One and one. I just think we were talking before about his uh, grandfather and his father played in the Mexican League for Navajoa. I think sometimes we get caught up in thinking that the maybe the only pro leagues are here in the U.S. of A. And that's not true. There are some fantastic baseball players in Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, Venezuela, Mexico, and now um, in Australia. And in Japan has had exceptional professional baseball for a number of years. I really believe that somewhere down the road we will get a true World Series. One and two still. Even starting to see some uh, baseball programs developing professional American players in, uh, in Europe. There have been several players from Holland right. signed recently. Italy has a professional league. Tapper, Merker slaps it away. He'll get a skate save, a glove save. And McGriff applies a tag. 1-3 if you're keeping score. Well, this isn't the classic way of doing it, but whatever works, works. Merker trying to get to the ball, has it hit off his glove, and it caroms right over to first base where Fred McGriff picks it up and tags Alvarez. Two outs. Jeff Blauser in to give Merker a little bit of a breather as Rondell White comes on. Three hits for the Expos. One of them left the park. Mike Lansing's ninth home run of the year. That's all the scoring. To this point, Octavio Alvarez has set down 12 in a row. Been a frustrating day for Rondell White. He's trying to avoid the hat trick. 52-foot changeup. One ball, no strikes. Guess you got to have a pretty good sense of humor if you can laugh after that, after being struck out the first two times. On the ground and fair. Headed for the corner, could be extra bases. Polonia will play it conservatively. It's a two-out double for Rondell White, the fourth hit of the day for the Montreal Expos. It gives Rondell White 30 doubles. And it keeps him on course for that 300 batting average, which he said is his goal this year. He came in hitting right at 300. And this makes him one for three in the afternoon, so he's actually maybe raised it a point. That'll get him stirring around down into Braves' bullpen. Brad Klontz starts to throw. Chances are Merker, as you pointed out, Pete, probably five or six right now in his fifth inning of work. I'd like to get out of this jam if he is coming out a one and nothing ball game. For those of you interested in the Ryder Cup, Tom Laban defeated Seve Ballesteros in his match. Mark James of Europe beat Jeff Maggart. Howard Clark defeated Peter Jacobson. Everything else still going on. Segui the hitter, 1-0. and oh. He's grounded a short and single. Ian Woosnam and Fred Couples have their match. Davis Love has beaten Constantino Roca, three and two. And every, uh, no, there's another one. Guilford beat Brad Faxon. Pullen Montgomery beat Ben Crenshaw. And the rest of the match is still going on. That's in the left center field. That could be two also. White will score. Segui heads for second in sliding. Back-to-back -back doubles give the Expos a two to nothing lead. 65 RBIs for David Sidney. That's tops in the Montreal Ball Club, even though he hits for the most part in the number two spot on the order. A little bit off the end of the bat, but dropped it right in between Devereaux and Polonia. 
Couple of pitches not hit that hard, but in the right spot. Another runner in scoring position with two outs, and here's Jamil Benitez. He struck out swinging, fly to center. On the ground, Blauser's there. He's got to hurry. Long throw, close but got him. That'll do it at the top of the fifth inning, but the Expos come up with one more on back-to-back -back doubles and leave a runner stranded. We're halfway home. Braves trail it two to nothing. We go to the bottom half of the fifth inning. Expos leading it two to nothing. Joe and Skip with you. And Tavo Alvarez has been the story so far today. He has retired all 12 Braves hitters he has faced thus far. He's looking pretty sharp. He's made it look ridiculously easy, hasn't he? Not too many pitches. And he makes his seventh start of, the, of his big league campaign a good one. Not too bad for a guy who didn't start pitching this year till July. McGriff, Justice, and Lopez do up for Atlanta. Fred grounded out his first time up. First pitch strike. And lines one. Fred on the board, and the Braves have their first base runner. Nothing but zeros across for Atlanta until that base hit. There's a good start in the fifth. Fastball moving away, didn't try to pull it, just stayed right on it and hit it where it was pitched. Expo's media guide says that Alvarez's father and grandfather pitched in the Mexican Winter Leagues in Navajoa. I pitched in Navajoa, or played in Navajoa back in 1974. Great town in Sonora, the Mexican League. David Justice slide out his first time up. Nine for his last 23. 2-0. and oh. Brad Plant still throwing in the Braves' bullpen. Braves. Bobby Cox might go to him next inning by... Kent Merker, I think, pitched pretty well for five innings. He's been behind in the count a lot. He's thrown a lot of pitches, but a couple of two-out rallies in the fourth and fifth put him behind. That might be two. Lansing cuts off McGriff, makes the tag, but can't make the throw. Good play, Fred McGriff. Screened him enough that Lansing couldn't throw it over him. Lansing didn't play this very well, in my opinion. Once he makes the play and once he commits to tagging McGriff, what you got to do then is just run him back. Now, if he throws to first before he makes the tag, they've got McGriff in a rundown. They get the double play, but he neglected to do that. There's no place for Fred to run and hide if you throw to first after Fred commits to stop. Lopez struck out his first time up. 0-1. Abby came back after missing a few games with a good start a couple of nights ago. Alvarez from the stretch. And another foul ball by Javi. 0-2. A very cool day in Atlanta. Good day to wear your coat to the ballpark. Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Paper said 72. I believe the newspaper. I got just what I deserved. Good curveball, but how we got a piece of it to stay alive? You know, you're in that hermetically sealed world. You know, you go right out of the house, into the garage, into the car. You get to the ballpark, you get out, and you go, whoa! whoa. <laughs> what, is, what is this? This isn't 72. Crowd dressed for a football game. 0-2 oh, pitches outside. Good slider, but Tommy doesn't offer at it. Ball and two strikes. Justice at first, one out. 
two to nothing Expos in the fifth. Last regular season home game of the year for Atlanta. Hey, Joe, what do you do when you put up a hummingbird feeder and put the feed in and the hummingbirds don't come? What does that mean? They don't like you? Or? Depends on what you put in that feeder, buddy. The ring. Hummingbird feed. Yeah. yeah. A little juice, sugar water stuff. Yeah. Curve driven to deep left center. Back goes Cordero. That ball is off the top of the wall and gets away from Rondell White. Justice is going to score all the way from first, and Lopez has a double, and he just missed a homer. Two to one, Montreal. For Javi is 50th RBI of the year. I thought he had this one out, and I think he did too. Curveball, he went down and got it. Wasn't that bad a pitch? See how close it comes. Boy, right off the top of the wall. He missed a home run by less than a foot. 11th double of the year. Javi again strikes with two strikes in the count. His 15th RBI in that situation. Mordecai the hitter, he takes one low. Now the double play they could have gotten and didn't get has paid off in a run. Good point. 12 in a row had been set down by Alvarez until this inning. Now a run on three hits, or two hits make it. Bouncing ball by Mordecai's foul. One and one. they do that scoreboard operator knows more than the rest of us check swing and he went around says Ed Rapuano Bounced out to third, his first time up. The outfield shades him around to right. Curve. Dug out by Laker, and it's two and two. usually doesn't miss that pitch. we got enough of it to stay alive. Alvarez originally a Yankee product. Second round pick by the Yankees back in 1990. The Expos got him as compensation for the Yankees signing Melito Perez. Still two and two to Mordecai. Off the plate. Tough play for Sean Barry. He charges, throws on the run, got him. Good base running by Javi Lopez. He scoots over to third. Tying run at third base with two outs for Jeff Blauser. <laughs> Jeff hit the ball hard his first time up. Flight out deep to right. Four for his last 32. is going to work from the stretch. Fastball misses low. It's ball one. Kent Merker's spot due up next, but Dwight Smith has a bat. He's in the on-deck circle. The 1-0 to Blauser. He shows bunt. But Barry playing so deep, that's not a bad idea to get that run home. 2-0 the count. Smith ready if needed. 
Lousa takes low. It's 3-0, and, oh, and Dwight Smith may get a chance. Tying run at third. Let's see if Lauser gets a green light here. Fastball, he's swinging, but hits it hard and foul down the line. Three and one to count. has the sign he wants in the 3-1 pitch to Blauser. Fastball driven to left field. Right down the line. Over comes Cordero. At the wall he leaps and made the catch. And let's see if he's all right. He hit that wall pretty hard. And now finally to his feet. Blauser robbed again. Braves get a run. On two hits. They strand one at third. And we go to the sixth. Two to one expo. Congratulations to TBS and National Geographic Explorer, winners of five Emmys for 1995. Year after year, the most honored nature series on television. National Geographic Explorer, every Sunday night at 9 Eastern, only on TBS. Time for the Budweiser game summary. Lansing's home run just barely fair. Kent Merker pitched extremely well. Braves seem to be getting to Tavo Alvarez a little bit. We shall see, and here's Joe. Brad Klotz comes on for his 56th appearance of the year for the Braves. He's 8-1, a 384 ERA and four saves. It's been roughed up a little bit of late. Bobby going to try to get Brad and maybe Merker a little work today to get them sharpened up. Marker went five innings, five hits, two runs. They were both earned. He walked one, struck out seven. And Sean Barry leads it off against Quantz and takes ball one. Stage manager didn't have a card for the Budweiser game summary, but we got through it okay. Rookies. 1-0 pitch hit right back at Quantz and into center field. Sean Barry has his first hit of the day. And the Expos have their leadoff man aboard here in the sixth. Plants worked last night. Gave up a run and a couple of hits and a walk. Well, Bobby Cox, excuse me, Joe, was saying before the game he felt maybe he hadn't used Clance, Pena, and McMichael enough after the Braves clinched, and so he wanted to bring them all in back to back today. Get them back to where they were a couple of weeks ago when they were all doing the job and all fitting into the roles nicely. Cordero's been tearing the Braves up. That's foul. And did some damage with the glove, taking away the hit from Blauser in the bottom half of the fifth. He's one for two today. 19 for 45 on the year against Atlanta pitching. Sean Barry, three stolen bases. He's been caught six times. Clunk's trying to keep him close. Off day tomorrow, then the last road trip of the year. Two days in Philadelphia. Three games over the weekend in New York. Breaking ball popped up. Shallow center field. In comes Devereaux. Mordecai, though, is under it. Makes the catch. Nice play by the Braves second baseman. One out for Mike Lansing, who homered his last time up. A two-out solo homer that hit the foul tape down the left field line. You can really tell the difference, can't you, when guys are out there who haven't played together much. There's just a little uncertainty on every 
fly ball that's hit short into the outfield. You're not sure of everybody's range. Mm -hmm. You don't know how far they're used to coming out to get pop-ups like that or coming in from the outfield. Lansing bounces one off the plate foul. 256, it was his ninth homer of the year. More late heroics last night out on the West Coast, this time in the National League, as Chris Quinn hit his first home run of the year to give the Dodgers a win. Wrote a first, Barry is just back. I mean, big game for the Dodgers, too. Meanwhile, Randy Johnson, 15 strikeouts in seven and a third. And Seattle won again. Mm -hmm. Jay Buhner, 11 homers in his last 17 games. The Mariners have it working. Two-game lead in the American League West. Fastball almost hit Lansing. It's one and one. He could use one here. One out. Ground ball might get him out of the inning. There goes Barry. The pitch is down and away. Throw down. Whoa, what a throw by Lopez. Not an easy pitch to handle, and he made a throw to second that was a bullet. Barry gunned down for the seventh time this year. Well, we've seen good throws by both O'Brien and Lopez here lately, and that's good as you head toward the playoffs. You can't make a much better throw than that. He tagged himself coming in, and look at the pitch he had to handle down and away, but he threw a strike. Outstanding job, two away, and Lansing stays alive. Two and two, the count. Clonts ready. Breaking ball. Lifted down the right side, but out of play, and the count remains two and two. Good crowd here today. The last home game of the regular season. Final day of fan appreciation weekend. The outfield plays Lansing around to right. Slider lifted into center field, but Devereaux is there. And he one-hands it for the out. That'll end the inning. One hit, but only three batters face for Klontz. A good inning. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Expos lead it two to one. We go to the bottom half of the sixth inning. Two to one Montreal. Dwight Smith will get the pinch hit. Only this time it's leading off the inning and he'll hit for Brad Klontz. Jason Schmidt loosening up in the Braves bullpen. Dwight takes outside for ball one from Tavo Alvarez. Dwight hitting 252. 18 of his 21 RBIs have come as a pinch hitter. 101. Up high and away. Two and one the count. Alvarez, I'm sure Pete and Don told you. Missed all of last year after shoulder surgery. Didn't start pitching till the middle of this season. After going through his rehab. Big swing, but Smith comes up empty, two and two. Started at double A, was two and one at double A. Went to triple A, and his two wins in Ottawa were both shutouts. Full count. Lefty Brian Eversker begins to loosen up for the Expos. Alvarez is spot due up third in the seventh for Montreal. Payoff pitch. Lifted toward center field, but Rondell White has a play. One out. Luis Polonia, 0 for 2 today. Struck out, lined out. No matter where the Braves open up in the playoffs, Skip, it's going to be a long flight from New York. Could be L.A., could be Colorado, could be Houston. Fastball bounced up the middle. Lansing backhands it. Nice play. 
That ball picked up a little speed, had some top spin on that hop that hit the skin part of the infield, and Lansing still handled that. Yeah, here's another look at it. Fine play on an even better throw. He's running directly away. That's like the jump pass in football, and he throws it straight. Yeah, I think what we're going to do is just fly to the St. Louis area and do wheelies till we <laughs> figure out where we're going. Mike Devereaux over two. Pop to second, pop to left. Change up, had him fooled 0 and 1. Alvarez with only run, one rough inning, that was the fifth when the Braves got their only run. That evens the count as it bounces up there, one and one the count. Alvarez is 1-1 pitch. Another curve just missed. 2-1. and one. I know the teams on the West Coast are playing each other a lot. Where do the Rockies play the beginning of this week, Hal? At L.A.? Yeah. And finish the season at home with the Giants. Ground ball. Close to the bag at third, but Barry with a good play, and Devereaux is retired. So are the Braves in order. And we go to the seventh inning here in Atlanta with the Expos on top, 2-1. to one. Six innings in the books here in Atlanta. Montreal on top two to one. And a reminder that tonight, don't miss the NFL on TNT. Coverage begins with the Coors Light Pro Football tonight. Pre-game special at 7 o'clock with Vince Cellini and Mark May. Then join Vern Lundquist and Pat Hayden as the Green Bay Packers take on the Jacksonville Jaguars at 8 o'clock. We go to the seventh inning. Jason Schmidt on to pitch for the Braves. And here to take you the rest of the way, Skip Carey. Thank you, Joe. Schmidt is 2-1, a 4.50 earned run average. Mark Grisalonic leads it off and hits the first pitch on one hop to third. One pitch, one out. One other ingredient in that wild card race, Houston, who trails the Dodgers by a game and a half for the wild card. They play at home at the beginning of the week with Pittsburgh and then finish up with four games at Wrigley Field. There's your wild card race. Tim Laker is the batter. He has fouled to the catcher and struck out. Looking. They don't think he can pull Jason Fast strike right through there, 0 and 1. One out, nobody aboard. 2 6 and 0 for Montreal, 1 2 and 0 for Atlanta. Tombo Alvarez is on deck. He will hit for himself, it would appear. 1 and 1, the count. In the American League, that final week schedule, looking at the race, especially for the wild card, New York, who's playing great right now, and leading the wild card race by a game and a half, they finish up on the road. Started to swing, stopped in time. Two balls and a strike. Two games at Milwaukee on Tuesday and Wednesday, and then three games at Toronto. Close it out. Boy, our buddy Otis Nixon killed California last night. Four hits, three stolen bases. They have really fallen apart. The Angels finish up with three at Seattle beginning tomorrow night. That's going to be a huge series. And then they close out at home four with Oakland. Just missed inside. Laker draws a pass. So a runner at first with one out. And Alvarez will hit for himself. And it wouldn't surprise you if he tried to lay down a body. Yet to record a major league hit. He's 0 for 2 today, 0 for 12 for the year. Cincinnati has broken through with two in the fourth. They lead the Phillies 2 0. The Delta scoreboard coming along momentarily will bring you all the other scores. 0 oh, 1 the count. Boy, here's a pretty good deal. The Atlanta newspapers will pay you $39.95 till you sell your car. <laughs> I like that. 
bunted down the first base line. McGriff's only play will be the first. Renner at second, two down. Now if we could just get him to circle those airplanes around your house with the temperature before you come to the ballpark. <laughs> it's not that bad today. Here's Rondell White. Oh, you mean you have to pay them the $39.95? It didn't say that. Rondell White, one for three, doubled his last time. Halftime, the Bears lead the Rams 21-17 the NFL slow and away to white one ball no strengths <laughs> right through there a ball and a strike Jason had a rough start his last time out but you have to like his aggressiveness. He's got a good live fastball, good breaking ball. He's going to be tough to keep off this club next year. I pop foul out of play. It's one and two. Next year is a subject that everybody is just about forgotten about for now. You don't know what the rules are, are going to be. Pop foul back and out of play. Still one and two. I know that's John's, John Trujillo's philosophy. The heck with 96. Let's just worry about 95. We can't do anything about 96 anyway, because they won't tell us under what rules we're going to operate. Is there going to be a salary cap? If so, how much? Is there going to be a basic agreement? If so, when? Might be uh, difficult to put that off if we weren't having such fun right now, looking yeah. forward to the playoffs and all the postseason activity. But all the general managers are going nuts because yeah. they can't even plan about structuring their club for the future. The one-two pitch. Breaking ball hit hard. Nice, convenient hop for Jeff. Blouser to first, and the inning is over. Schmidt gets him out. No hits, no runs, no errors. A runner is left. We go to the bottom half of the seventh inning with your score. Montreal 2, Atlanta 1. Chipper Jones leads things off as we go to the bottom of the seventh. Yeah, that's just about right, too. Look how good Don's hair looks in the offseason. Yeah, it's not bad. <laughs> I know about Pete. <laughs> uh, Chipper Jones leads off the bottom of the seventh. That was before I got mono, of course. <laughs> you had the longest recorded case of that disease. <laughs> Greg McMichael begins to work in the bullpen. Eversgaard is back up for... Montreal and Tavo Alvarez deal is high and outside. One ball, no strengths. About time to go to work here. It's 2-1 Montreal, bottom of the seventh. A ball and a strike. Braves have clinched this series against Montreal this year. It's been a while since they've had this many wins against their West Palm mates. Yeah, they're normally very, very tough on us. Clarence Jones and David Justice trying to figure out how this guy's getting us out. But he's sure doing it. He's got a good enough fastball to keep the hitters honest, but he's thrown his breaking ball for strikes most of the day. That's been a key for him. Ground ball gets through. Base hit. Chipper will round the bag, but uh, Cordero boots it. Jones is at second. Be a hit in an air and the tying run in scoring position. That's the one thing you'd think he'd be able to do is field a ground ball out there. But I think when you go to the outfield, 
on a play like this that slowly hit, you start thinking about, will the guy go for two? And if you look up before the ball gets to you, doesn't matter if you're on the infield or the outfield, you're going to boot it. And I think he was thinking about Chipper more than the baseball. Felipe Alou is on his way to the mound, and that might be all the left-handed part of the Atlanta order is coming to the plate. And yeah, he wants Eversgard to come on. And he doesn't want Tavo Alvarez to take a loss here because the kid has pitched well. So that's the move that will be made, and we'll be back right after this. Brad Eversgard has no record, a 6.28 earned run average. This is his 22nd appearance. And in 21 appearances, he's pitched 14 and a third innings, given up 19 hits, 10 runs, two home runs. The league hitting 317 against him. Eversgard out of Centralia, Illinois, now lives in Hoffman, Illinois from Kaskaskia Community College in downstate Illinois. And he's about ready to face Fred McGriff here with a runner in scoring position and nobody out. He pitched quite well here a couple of nights ago. A couple of innings, gave up only one hit and no runs. He did issue a walk, but it was a, an intentional pass. begins to work in the Montreal bullpen. Greg McMichael up for Atlanta. Fred could use a long one. So could the Braves. One ball, no strikes. He'd like to rope a long one. That accomplished a lot of things. Give the Braves the lead and get him back on track toward 30. That's what he had in mind, but it came up empty. One and one the count. The outfield plays McGriff just slightly to pull, and they play him, of course, very, very deep. He wants to pull the ball here in any event just to get that tying run to third if all else fails. Ball. Laker made some play there. Two balls and a strike. Outstanding play on a breaking ball. He is the guy the Expos keep waiting to arrive. He is their catcher of the future, let's say. Had a good year in 94 at Ottawa offensively. They'd like for him to hit a little more. He's certainly got the defensive tools. Two and two. Eversgard spent most of the year at Ottawa with six and two, a 2.38 earned run average, two saves. Was used primarily as a setup man. And the 2-2 pitch is forthcoming. Ground ball, he, good job of hitting. He didn't get his home run, but he got the runner to third with one out. So McGriff made sure he pulled the ball. Here's David Justice. Yeah, there was no secret about any of his swings, what he was trying to do, even on the breaking stuff. He was trying to go out around those pitches and make sure they got to the right of the mound. So Justice stands in. Infield comes in for Montreal, as you might expect. They're trying to cut off the tying run here. Justice has homered against Eversgird in two at bats in his career. Had a good cut, but fouled it off. A few times I played first base, this is one situation I really didn't relish. Having to come in, play on the grass with a guy who could just take your hat right off the top of your head from about 90 feet away. Laker, another good play. And the count evens at one and one.
next up and in two balls and a strike tying run a third one out good pitch to hit here to get that run home something middle of the plate three and one now an even better pitch perhaps will be forthcoming Aradia getting ready in a hurry right hand hitter is next but the Braves still have Plesko and Giovanola, left-hand hitters, waiting in the wings. Ground ball, just foul, pass first, full count, three and two. Three and the breaking ball, too. Eversgaard does a little maintenance work around the mound. Things shift a little bit more back to the favor of the pitcher here because... David doesn't have the luxury of taking a borderline pitch. Three, two. Did he go? Yes. Justice is called out. They say he went around. Mr. Excitement, Paul Rungi with the call, and two are out here. Well, let's see. I believe Paul Rungi was probably right. David tried to stop his swing, but that angle that he's freezing there was not the angle that the bat actually got out to. So Alou comes on. He's going to go to his right-hander to face Javi Lopez. Eversgird did his job. He got out the two men he faced, and we'll be back right after this. Gil Heredia on the pitch. He's out of the University of Arizona. He's 5-6, and six, a 4.49 earned run average. The league hitting 296 against him. And he'll face Javi Lopez with a runner at third and two out. Dave Leeper now begins to throw in their bullpen. McMichael is through throwing. He's ready to pitch when we move to the eighth inning. Javi Lopez among the Braves leaders hitting in the clutch He's got Chipper Jones at third base Lopez tops on the ball club in this situation he just missed getting one out of here his last time against Tavo Alvarez in and off the top of the left center field wall Chipper Waits at third. Javi stands in. Heredia ready to go to work. Good sinker, good slider, good changeup for Heredia. Low and away. One ball, no strikes. One of those guys that you have to make him get the ball up a little bit. If it starts at the knees, it's not going to be hittable by the time it gets to the plate. 1-0. Ground ball, headed for left field. Great play at short, long throw. He is safe, and the game is tied. Grisalonic made a dandy play, but he couldn't throw him out. Dandy play by Grisalonic, but a scary play by Javi Lopez going head first into the bag. He's giving everything he's got to get that tying run home in a game that really doesn't mean much to the Braves this time of year. And he slides right over the top of it, and he's okay, but I'm sure Bobby Cox's heart jumped up into his throat a little bit when he saw that play. A year ago, Javi, 13 homers, 35 RBIs. This year, 14 and 51. Mordecai fouls it away. 2-2 is our score. Tavo Alvarez cannot be the winner nor can he be the loser already you got the ground ball but in the wrong spot he's ahead of Mordecai 0 2 things change around here a little bit now with Sean Barry playing very close to the line at third base to eliminate any chance for Mordecai to get an extra base hit At least down that third baseline. 
The 0 2 instead, the first runner back. The Yankees have struck for three. They lead Detroit 3 0 in the fifth. The 0 2. Count stays the same. We mentioned it last night, but I think it bears repeating more what the Angels are going through. That's got to be a what a miserable feeling day after day after day. Reminds you of 1964 in the Philadelphia Phillies who had a six and a half game lead in, on September 21st and blew it. The Cardinals were the recipients of that mm -hmm. good fortune. A ball and two strikes. Runner at first, two out, a run is in. Hit that ball well, but way out the front. Mordecai out of Birmingham, Alabama. That's Bobby Cox hiding behind that post. First runner back. Two two our score. Oh. High and inside the runner will go on the three two pitch with two out. The inability of Lansing to get the double play in the fifth inning allowed the Braves an extra opportunity to get the run home. And then here in the seventh, the error by Cordero figures prominently as Chipper got to second, and then McGriff got him to third. 3-2 pitch. Foul back. Correction, it's two and two. My mistake. Two balls, two strikes. Another 2 2 runner goes. Strike three, inning over. Mordecai caught looking, and the inning is history. But the Braves tie the game up. A run on two hits, on air, a runner left, and at the end of seven, we're tied 2 2. Time for the Delta scoreboard here. Cincinnati 2 0 over the Phillies. They've played five. Florida with three in the third has claimed the lead over New York. Ryan Bowen against Dave Malicki. Pittsburgh got a Jeff King homer his 18th of the year to take an early lead at Chicago. Big game for Houston today. They can ill afford to lose on the Dodgers. Home to San Diego, Colorado at San Francisco. Later on in the American League, Toronto and Boston 1-1 going to the bottom half of the eighth inning. Milwaukee four in the second. Baltimore has scored a run in the fourth. They're still batting. Yankees three in the fifth that kid Andy Pettit pitching for New York today Minnesota 2 1 over the White Sox at the end of four Cordova his 22nd homer no score at Kansas City California Texas Oakland at Seattle later on that's your Delta scoreboard Greg McMichael is on to pitch for Atlanta Mike Kelly is in right field Ed Giovanola is at second Mike Mordecai moves from second to first and as I mentioned Greg McMichael is on to pitch for Atlanta Mac. 7 and 2, a 2.81 earned run average, the loser here last night. Only his second loss of the year, though, and he'd like to get back on the right track and have a good inning today. Sagi leads it off. He's two out of three, a single, a double, he's driven in a run. Oh. Outside, one ball, no strikes. You know, I think, I think Bobby's right, Skip. Sorry about his setup guys in the bullpen. You want to make sure they're sharp, just like the hitters. If you give them a little rest, make sure they're fine-tuned as they get into the postseason. If McMichael and Plants are struggling with a couple of pitches or a little bit of control, get them back out there until they feel more comfortable. One and one, the count on Sagi. 
Big Tim Scott begins to throw in the bullpen for Montreal. Forty five thousand four hundred sixty one paid today. Two million five hundred sixty two thousand roughly for the year. Considering everything that's outstanding. Two and two the count. Seventy two dates. Yeah that's pretty good. Rounded foul, fast first, still two and two. Two balls, two strikes. Nobody on or out here in the eighth inning. There's a drive, deep right field. Mike Kelly goes back. He's in the game for defensive purposes, but he can't defense that one. And just like that, Montreal has the lead back. Segui, his 12th homer of the year. His third hit of the game. Well, we tied it up, but that didn't last long. Eighth home run allowed by Greg McMichael, and Segui really sat back on his back foot on this one and just turned on it. Watch him stay back and keep the weight against the front side, and he knew it when he hit it. Jamil Benitez, the batter, looks at one outside. One ball, no strikes. Well, you made the point earlier, and you're right. We need this guy to get straightened out, Greg McMichael. A ball and a strike to count. That ball is well hit, but fouled on the right side. Home run distance. A couple of weeks ago, Greg told me that he was a little upset with himself because he felt like he was trying to aim the ball a little bit, trying to hit corners, trying to be too fine with his control instead of being a little more aggressive and getting strikes early in the count so he could use his good changeup. One, two. There's the changeup. He just did stay alive. In 38 and two-thirds innings here in Atlanta, Greg has given up seven home runs. Well, that's a bunch. Round ball up the middle. A solid base hit for Benitez. So Jamil is aboard. And here's Sean Berry, who is one for three today. The more you see him, he's a guy who he doesn't have great power. He doesn't have great running speed. He doesn't have a great arm, but he's good in all departments. Well, he's a good, solid ball player. And Came out of the Kansas City organization and played briefly for them in parts of 90 and 91. I like him a lot. He's not afraid to get his uniform dirty either. Snap throw to first. Benitez scrambles back. First play, but he's in there. They got him in late 1992 in a deal that included Chris Haney and Bill Sampin going to Kansas City. And he had hit 21 homers that year for Omaha before he came to the Montreal Club. Hit and run, swing and miss, throw is in plenty of time. And Lopez continues his good work. Giavadola took the throw. Benitez got a little bit of a late start because you want to make sure you don't get picked off on a hit and run play, but his teammate didn't help him out much. Sean Barry swings through the pitch and Lopez gets him easily. A ball and a strike. I still like Barry. Me too. Outside. 
Two balls and a strike. 3 2 Montreal is our score now. Mariano Duncan has hit a three run homer at Philadelphia. And the Reds now lead 5 0. Jeff Kent has hit his 20th homer. But Florida still leads 4 to 3 over the Mets. The 3 1 to Barry. Hit hard. Chipper can handle it. Blouser does. Has no chance. Let's see how they score it. Probably a hit. But you never know. Take another look at it. Tough hop for Chipper to handle. It's going to be scored an error. The ball came up on him. He did his best to try to get the glove up in time to knock this down, but right off his thumb. And that's a pretty tough error. Yeah, I would I would have scored that a hit. But nobody asked us, so Will Cordero is the banner. Tim Salmon has singled home Tony Phillips. And California leads Texas 1-0 in the first runner on two out and Chili Davis about to hit. First time they've had a lead in almost nine games. Over nine games, 85 innings. Snap throw to first again. Barry's back. Tommy feeling frisky today. He's throwing the ball all over the line and throwing it very well. Yeah, the Braves catcher's percentage is up drastically in September. They've thrown out 8 of 23 base stealers. That's a 35% throwout ratio compared to 20% for most of the year. Barry just three out of nine in the stolen base department. We're spending an inordinate amount of time worrying about him. Three, eight, and one for the Expos, two, four, and one for the Braves. I pop foul back. He takes some of the funniest looking swings, this time just a foul ball, but he hits home runs on swings like that. Yeah, he did last night. It did, did it against Maddox up there, too. He does a pretty good job of keeping his weight centered over the plate, though. He doesn't pull away too much, and I think that's why it looks a little funny, like he's going out to get that ball in the outside corner to pull it to the left side. Cordero took it and departs. And maybe that's why he's susceptible to that pitch, because he's thinking middle plate away. Get surprised inside. Good pitch by McMichael right at the target. Locked him up. <laughs> Cordero didn't like it, and quite frankly, I think he's right. Here's Mike Lansing. He has walked, homered, and flied to center. Ground ball to short should end the inning and does, but the homer by Segui gives Montreal the lead back. A run on two hits, an air, a runner left. We go to the bottom half of the eighth inning. Montreal three, Atlanta two. We go to the bottom half of the eighth inning. Montreal leading at three to two. Here's what's coming up on Braves baseball. We'll have the broadcast for you on TBS here Tuesday night from Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia. Airtime 730. Sports South will have the Wednesday broadcast against the Phillies. A Tuesday night game. John Smoltz against Paul Quantrill. Greg Maddox goes on Wednesday against Michael Mims. Tim Scott on the pitch for Montreal. Big Braves fan looking in under the weather today. Esther Pash down in Marco Island, Florida. Miss Pash, we hope to get well soon. Blouser leads things off against Scott. Heredia won a third of an inning, gave up a hit, recorded a strikeout. Scott, a great big right-hander. Up and in, one ball, no strikes. He's 2-0, and a 4.04 run run average. This is his 62nd appearance. He leads their team in that department. League hitting 225 against him. 
with 55 strikeouts, 62 innings. Good fastball, good slider. Blauser pops one back into the upper deck. A ball and a strike. Alejandro Pena, as you see, laboring in the Atlanta bullpen. Harris up and throwing for Montreal. Along with Leeper. That didn't miss by much. Two balls and a strike. Blauser has flied to right, flied to left. Ed Giovanola is next on the top of the order. would be a nice way to get things started. Yeah, he's got to throw strikes in this situation. He come in with a one-run lead after Segui got that run back. The Braves picked up in the bottom of the seventh inning. Not what Felipe Alou wants, pitching behind the count in this park. That's right, three there. It's three and two. Boy, he takes a lot of pitches, doesn't he, since he's having his troubles? That's not a bad take, though, right there. Trying to get on. Scott's going to have to throw two strikes and made him throw one there on a 3-1 count. A drive a mile but foul. He was too quick through the strike zone with that swing. And when you're going bad that's what happens. Even when you have a good swing you hit the ball foul. Another 3-2 pitch will be forthcoming. See if he throws him another fastball. Did he go? Yep. Blows are out on strikes. No argument from Jeff. That was a quick check swing, but Ed Rapuano rang him up quickly. This is a high, hard fastball away from him. And... Indeed, Jeff did go after it. So his problems continue. He's had some good hacks today, but nothing to show for it. Giovanola stands in. And Luis Polonia moves on deck. <laughs> Stirak, outside corner. Pena will come on to pitch the top of the ninth. Ah. Oh and two. That's a little more what Felipe Alou had in mind. And with his hard stuff, when Scott gets ahead of you, he can be awfully tough on you. Uh, Joe, I don't know how to tell you this. First, the stretch pitch. Low and away, but if you look down to our right, Mm -hmm. Down on the aisle, there's a lady sitting in a wedding dress. Uh-huh. Why do you not want to break it to me? Well, uh, it's just hard to understand. What? <laughs> <laughs> a ball and two strikes. Two. Good cut, but he fouled it back. Still one and two. We got a wedding gown, a wedding veil, and a baseball glove. <laughs> Came prepared. The veil attached to her braids cap, too. Yeah, everybody's got to be somewhere. The pits. Stayed alive. The wave is broken out here. Sutton is gnashing his teeth over on radio. Mel Rojas has now gotten up. He's the guy who closed things down last night for Montreal. And Giovanola fights another one off. The count stays one and two. He's had some good swings. First time to face Scott, and each one you foul off, you get a little better timing on that fastball. 
two and two is the count. Got him. Fastball at the letters outside corner. Scott strikes out the first two many faces, and now Luis Polonia the better. I wonder if it's tough to do the wave in a wedding veil. You know, get your hands hung up, get hung up in it. I would be about the last guy you'd ask about that one, buddy. <laughs> she participated in the way. The pitch. Curve low, one ball, no strikes. And I just figured out a new definition of how you can tell a guy doesn't have good reflexes. Mm -hmm. When he jumps up for the wave two sections early. That's, that's bad. That's not good at all. The 1 0 pitch. Hacked foul into the seats. It's 1 0. Scott, a pitching machine now. Yeah. It's like the near home run off the bat of Blouser woke him up. Fell behind three and one, and since then he has been hitting the corners. Mike Devereaux would be next, but there are two out in the inning. Knocked him off the plate a little bit. Two and two. He's got it, and the inning is over. Polonio for four on the day. Hit the ball sharply, but nothing to show for it. Peña on to pitch. We go to the ninth. Montreal leads it by a score of three to two. Only from TBS, the biggest night of movies on television. TBS Award Wednesday. This Wednesday, winners of five Academy Awards and 19 nominations. Warren Beatty, Faye Dunaway, Bonnie and Clyde, Paul Newman, Hud, Burt Lancaster, Catherine Hepburn, The Rainmaker. The biggest night of movies on television. TBS Award Wednesday, 8.05 Eastern Wednesday, only on TBS. Al Pena on to pitch as we go to the ninth inning. Meanwhile, at Philadelphia, David Wells, the Reds pitcher, has a no-hitter through six innings today. And his team has a big lead, 5-0. So we'll keep an eye on that one for you as we go to the ninth here. And Pena gets the call. He is 2-0, a 2.93 earned run average. With the Braves, has no record and a high ERA, 5.59 in 10 games. I'm assuming that if the Reds open up at Colorado, well, regardless of who they play in the first round of the playoffs, they'd probably use John Smiley in the first game, wouldn't you think? Yeah, I would, that would be my guess. By the way, as we go to the ninth of our last game at home, our thanks to the ladies and gentlemen on the crew here who do such a great job. That's the best telecast. In base. I'm not talking announcers. I'm talking crew, cameramen, technical people, right. engineers, and the like. They are the best. By so far, it's not even funny, and we really appreciate all they do for us. They make us look good at times, and that's not easy. No, uh, we get a lot of letters, too, from fans who talk about how much they wish other broadcasts would take a little page from our production people and the way they do things. And that's a huge compliment. The 0-1 pitch. It's outside. It's a ball and a strike. Yeah, some people want us to try to televise like the networks. I think maybe it might be better if they want just the opposite of that. Mm -hmm. Right through there. A ball and two strikes. And it stands to reason if you do 
80 games every year like our guys do as opposed to the networks who do one game a week and maybe 20 games a year you ought to get better. So we're not knocking the networks at all. It's just that our people who were very proud of Chipper on a funny hop gets his man one away. Well I think when we do as many games during the course of a season if it's 125 or whatever it might add up to be on the course of a regular season broadcast it's not so much an event we pay more attention to the game because we do so many baseball games and that's what people want to see they want to see the game that's what puts the money in our pockets is the love of baseball the game they cannot kill they keep trying but the game's just too good Laker is 0 for 2 with a walk and looks at a strike and Pena is throwing hard today 0 and 1. Tony Tarasco will pinch it next. Had it right by him. Al kind of shook his head a little bit after that swing and miss. He was not happy with the location of that fastball but it sure had something on it. And that's the one nice thing when you got good velocity you can get away with a mistake. Mm -hmm. oh. One and two the count. Just absolutely blew him away. Two down. Here's Tony T. He's had some good movement on it, too. He just missed with a fastball before that was trying to tail back. That one catches a pretty good portion of the plate, but you can see how late Laker was on it. Tarasco got off to a great start and then went into sort of a swoon. He's down to 245. He does have 13 homers, 36 RBIs. He has stolen 24 bases. A disappointing year for him. He's a better hitter. I think time will show than his record this year will indicate. 0 and 1. He's just back after serving a suspension for charging the mound. Was not eligible for the first two games of this series. Their outfield situation is getting pretty crowded out. At the beginning of next year, they're going to have a lot of good talent to pick from. It's whether they carry four, five, six outfielders remains to be seen, but pretty good young players. You know Rondell White's going to be in the middle of the picture somewhere, mm -hmm. but everything else sort up for grabs. 1-1 one, one pitch. Didn't get that. It's 1-2. and two. And do they keep Moise Salou? Do they give this kid Benitez a chance to play every day at the Major League level next year? Money will answer those questions, I guess. That's and whatever the rules are, there we go again. Chased a bad ball and struck out, and Pena made some points today. He looked terrific. No hits, no runs, no errors, none left. We go to the bottom half of the ninth inning with your score. Expos three, Braves two. Mike Devereaux leads things off against Mel Rojas, who pitched brilliantly here last night in the ninth, shutting the Braves down. One, two, three. Big upset. I think it's an upset in the NFL. Minnesota leads Pittsburgh 37-12 with 14 minutes left. The Steelers having trouble scoring points. And the Giants 45-23 over New Orleans with just four and a half minutes left in that game. Here, it's three to two. The Expos lead the Braves. They've out hit them 8-4. Each team has one error. Reich on the outside corner. It's 0 and 1. And Devereaux today has popped to second, flied to left, grounded to third. Rojas seeks his 30th save of the year. 
Made him look bad on a, what looked like a splitter and a two and two. Pedro Borbon up in the Atlanta bullpen. When this guy is on, he's as tough as anybody closing out a ball game. He throws hard, and if his split finger pitch is around the plate, it's almost impossible to hit. He throws it so hard. All the way to the screen. It's one and two. Who hit a home run off him to win a game for us earlier this year? Was it Justice? I think so. A ball and two strikes. Well, David won't hit one today. He's out of the game. Line drive, left center, base hit. It may take off and roll. Devereaux's going for second. He will make it. He finally hung one. And Mike hit the daylights out of him. Mike figures out a way to get at least one hit every time he gets a chance. And you can see there that ball stayed up a little bit. Started at the waist, ended up at the knees, and Devereaux raked it. Well, now a long one here, and we're on the way home. Get ready for Philly on Tuesday. Chipper Jones, one out of three, singled and scored in the seventh. Outside, one ball, no strikes. Ryan Klesko has grabbed a bat and moved on deck. This is in keeping with something that Pete and Don talked about last night about Rojas and how key for him is that first hitter. Let's see if it pans out again today. Boy, he had a good cut, but he didn't get it. One and one the count. Tom Marsh of the Phillies just hit a double in the bottom of the seventh to break up David Wells' attempt at a no-hitter today. The stretch. One-one pitch. Ground ball just foul. Pass first. He's made some pretty good pitches to Jones here. Chipper's been in this spot before this year. Three times he's gone out of the yard to win ball games. 24 times the Braves have won in their last at bat this year. The one two pitch. Look out in the dirt. And Lakers done a good job on several low pitches. Yeah, Justice hit a three-run homer against him back on June 28th in the bottom of the ninth to win a game for Atlanta 4-3. Full count now, three and two. He's trying to make sure he doesn't make another mistake with that Fork ball and almost threw another one away. Laker has his work cut out for him right now because Rojas, instead of being loose and free and just airing it out, is trying to be careful. That'll get him in more trouble. Good pitch for Chipper to hit here, and let's see if Rojas goes with the fastball or his out pitch, which is the fork ball. He walked it, threw it low. He went with a fork ball, but he couldn't throw a strike. Here's Klesko. Joe Kerrigan on his way to the mound. He's the pitching coach of the Montreal team. The tying run is at second. The winning run is at first. There's nobody out. Klesko gets the call, and then Mike Kelly is scheduled to hit. I think for Ryan here, is number one to have been observant as to what took place in front of him to see that Rojas is struggling a little bit with his fork ball and be patient. If he throws a fork ball early in the count, lay off of it. And maybe you'll get a fastball later in the count to hit. No activity in the bullpen for Montreal. It's Rojas against the world. 
Barbone has quit throwing for Atlanta, but he's still on his feet down there. Plesko two out of three in his career against Rojas, a home run included. It's low, one ball, no strikes. After Klesko, it's Mike Kelly, Javi Lopez, and a pinch hitter. No, check it. It'll be Mike Mordecai. After Lopez. Just missed 2-0. and oh. Good patience. Now the bullpen gets busy for Montreal. A right-hander is up. Willie Fraser. Now you can look for that fastball. 3 and 0. Oh. Rojas wants a new baseball. Philippe Ballou can do nothing but watch helplessly. Will Bobby turn him loose? 3 and 0. Oh? Why not? Why not? Send the fans home with a thrill if he connects. High chopper. I wish he hadn't. Out there, that's all they can get. Swinging on a 3-0 pitch, he hit a ground ball. That's not what the doctor ordered. It does get the tying run to third. And Mike Kelly is the batter. You have to show that same patience on that 3-0 pitch if you get the green light. Yeah and really narrow down your strike zone and look for a pitch in a certain zone. Sometimes guys think that when you get the hit privilege 3-0, that means you have to swing, and that's not it at all. Well, another thing, too, you think 3-0, I'm going to hit a homer. Yeah. I've got the guy in such a hole, I can hit a homer here, and you overswing. Mike Kelly is the batter. Steve Rank, 0-1. Strikeouts. As we've chronicled so many times for you, this fellow's problem. He can do everything... If he makes contact, he's hitting only 195, 46 strikeouts, 133 at bats. But with Ducks on the pond, it's been a different story for Mike. He's hit a lot better when he's had scoring opportunities here, and he's got one at third. Had a good cut, but he came up empty on two. He's had some clutch hits, including some good hits against Montreal earlier in the year when he got a couple of starts. I remember a game at Montreal where he had a two-hit game, had a couple of doubles. Had a good cut again, but he follows it back, and the count stays the same. Nothing in two. Tough circumstance here. Fly ball ties the game. Ground ball might end it. Try to get something you can drive. Again, get Rojas to get the ball up a little. There's a drive deep left field. Is it deep enough? No. But it's deep enough to tie the game. Kelly just missed getting it out of here. When he hit it, I thought it was gone. That away, Mike. Three three, Javi Lopez the batter. I was like you, Skip. I thought he had launched it out of here. There's a fastball up. He was ahead in the count, but he made a mistake with the fastball, and Kelly got the head of the bat out there and almost won it. So Javi Lopez bats with a runner at first. Two out in the tie game. One ball, no strikes. Lopez has only faced Rojas once and was retired on that occasion. He has a single, a double, a couple of RBIs. Plesko leads at first. Good swing, but he found it back. Braves are getting much better swings at Rojas today than they did last night. Some real good extension on their swings. Everybody, uh, they've all turned it up a little bit, getting that head of the bat out there a little quicker. Again, Sean Barry is going to hug the line at third base to try to keep the Braves from getting a double down the line that might score Klesko from first. So there's a huge hole between Grizzolanik and Barry. 
Fusco dives back. And the stadium rocks. Don't get picked off here. No, that would not be a good idea. Fought off a high fastball. He's in the hole. One and two the count. Javi has come back from his time re just regaining some strength in that rib cage area that he had the muscle problem in. He's been swinging real well. The one two. Renner going. Low. Throw. He is safe. Plasco swipes a base. He hesitated halfway down, but a tough pitch for Laker to handle. Now all you need is a single. It's his fifth stolen base of the year. Laker hesitated also. He couldn't get the ball out of his glove. So if Javi can just bloop one somewhere, the Braves have a chance to come home a winner. Two balls, two strikes. It pops away. The runner's going to be at third. Three and two the count. That stolen base changes everything that Rojas has to do now. Before, with Klesko at first, he could give up a base hit, maybe even give up a double and still be in the ball game. When Klesko stole second, then he had to guard against giving up a base hit to lose the ball game, and that's why maybe he gripped that fork ball a little bit too tight, threw it in the dirt, and he's still in a pickle here. I wonder why they don't pitch around Lopez. 3-2 pitch. Stayed alive, still 3-2. Good spot with the pitch, too, and Javi got a piece of it. Well, a guy on deck may not have made much of a name for himself yet, but he is a good fastball hitter. And no easy chore if they pitch around Javi. Detroit has tied the Yankees, and Javi hits a little blooper. Fouled on the third base line. I guess that went off the plate. Yeah. Another 3 2 pitch will soon be forthcoming. That was a good fork ball, 3 and 2. He got him with a fastball. So Rojas gets out of it. We get free baseball in Atlanta on the last home day of the year. One hit. One run, a runner left. At the end of nine, we're tied, it's 3-3. Three, three. You want them? CBS has them. Movies for guys who like movies. One big, bad, in-your-face movie every Sunday night. Yeah! Tonight, when Bert meets Sally, it's love in the fast lane. <laughs> with the law hot on their trail. Burt Reynolds, Sally Field, and Jackie Gleason, Smokey and the Bandit. You want them? We got them. Movies for guys who like movies. 7 Eastern tonight, only on TBS. We go to the 10th inning here. Pedro Borbon on the pitch for Atlanta. It's a 3-3 ball game. Borbon takes his warm-up tosses. He'll face the top of the order as we go to the 10th. Rondell White will be the first one. And as White gets ready to stand in, here with the play-by-play -play story, Joe Simpson. Rondell White has had a tough day. He does have a double and a run scored, but he has also struck out twice. Borbon's 38th appearance of the year. He has a couple of saves. 28 innings, 15 walks, 29 strikeouts. The league only hitting 231 against him. Leadoff man to start things for Montreal. Bourbon's fastball in there. Good start. 0 and 1. 
Bourbon has pitched in two ball games against Montreal this year. A total of one inning, no runs allowed, but Rondell White sizzles one into left field. Poloni is going to have to hurry, and White goes in head first with a leadoff double. His second double of the day and his 31st of the year. Boy, he really turned on that pitch and just out of the reach of Chipper Jones. And now David Segui up there right-handed. Segui's homer in the eighth inning gave the Expos a lead three to two, but Atlanta tied it in the bottom of the ninth. One triple away from the cycle, but his job will be to get White to second base somehow. And he bunts, pops it up. Mordecai takes it on a hop, makes the tag, and Segui does his job. Sacrifice three unassisted. Go ahead, run at third with one out for Jimmy o Benitez. Benitez singled his last time up. He's one out of four. The infield will play in to try to cut off the run. And this is a big advantage for Benitez. Bourbon's going to work from the stretch. Fastball popped up, but out of play. He hit 259 at Ottawa, 16 homers and 69 RBIs. Eight for 21 is an expo. One and one. Sean Barry waits on deck. A 3-3 tie in the 10th. Checked his swing, but he went around, says Ed Rapuano. It's one and two. So now let's see if Bourbon goes to the slider to try to get the out. He does, but a high hopper over the head of Mordecai in the right field. That gets the go-ahead run in. Benitez with the infield drawn in, bounced one. It looked like it might have gotten the plate. And it was just high enough to get over Mordecai. I doubt that if Fred McGriff is standing there, it gets over his head. Didn't get the plate. Oh, just, just over the outstretched arm of Mordecai. And it's four to three Montreal. Here's Sean Berry. He's one for three. He's also been aboard on an error. For Benitez, his fourth RBI for the big league club. Checks his swing. The appeal made. He did not go around. One and one to count. Tony Clark has hit a two-run homer. Danny Bautista a solo homer off Steve Howe, and suddenly Detroit leads the Yankees 8-3. Detroit's got some thunder in their lineup. It's just that they can't keep anybody from scoring. One-one pitch, drilled a deep right center field. Back goes Mike Kelly. On the track, he makes the catch. Two down, and Benitez back to first. John Barry gave it a ride. Two outs for Cordero. Will today, one for four. But against the Braves this year, he has been outstanding. 19 for 47 on the year with three homers. California's lead over Texas is at three to nothing. Rangers batting bottom of the third. Hey, Beth Griffin's dad celebrates a birthday today. David is 49 years old again. Beth, the pretty little blonde gal, does mm -hmm. such a good job right. for the PR department up there. You ought to be proud of her, David. Happy birthday. Bourbon trying to keep Benitez close. He's running.
Pitches a strike. Did Lopez do it again? He did. Three for three today. Benitez didn't like the call, but Javi Lopez having a good day behind the plate, gunning down runners. That's three of them. We go to the tent. Braves trail it again. It's four to three Expos. Tonight, don't miss the NFL on TNT. Coverage begins with the Coors Light Pro Football Tonight program at 7 o'clock with Vince Cellini and Mark May, then join Vern Lundquist and Pat Hayden as the Packers take on the Jacksonville Jaguars. That'll be at 8 o'clock. NFL on TNT tonight. A new pitcher for the Expos as we go to the bottom half of the 10th inning. Left-hander Dave Leeper takes the hill, makes his 24th appearance of the year, looking for his first win. He has two saves. Actually, this would not be a win for him. This would be a win for Rojas. But Leifer could earn another save. 19 innings, 14 hits. Not only two home runs this year. Four walks, 11 strikeouts. The league only hitting 200 against him. He will face the bottom third of the order. Mordecai, Blauser, and then Giovanola. Mordecai today, 0 for 3. A lot of the folks still here. Braves had 45,461 at the ballpark. And here we go in the bottom of the 10th. 0-1 to Mordecai. Mike now at 290. Ah. Curve in there for a strike. Not only did David Wells lose his no-hitter in the seventh, he lost his shutout, too. The Phillies got a run. It's 5-1 Cincinnati. Going to the bottom of the eighth. A ball and two strikes. Good game at Houston. No score after five and a half. Hampton against Donovan Osborne. A little number down the line, and Leeper will grab it and toss to Segui for the out. Big out for Leeper in the Expos. They get the leadoff man here in the bottom of the 10th inning, and here's Jeff Blauser. Jeff's 0 for 3 today, but he's backed up Benitez to the wall in right field. Cordero caught one against the gate down the left field line, and he is struck out. Let's see where Sean Barry lines up. It's about even with the bag in case Jeff tries to bunt, but Barry's also very close to the line. Slider for a strike. And he was thinking bunt. Marquise Grissom will hit next. With the left-hander out there, he'll hit for Giovanola. Count even, one and one. Another good slider, and Jeff is out in front, and it's one and two. Blouser 0 for 3 lifetime against the lefty fouled back just below us four to three expos bottom of the tenth and one out Braves have to rally again two and two last Regularly scheduled home game of the year. Curve outside. Leapers run it full three and two after being ahead in the count. He does not want to put on the potential tying run. Everybody shifts a little bit toward left field in case Blauser pulls. Payoff pitch, breaking ball, he walked him. How about that? A 3-2 breaking ball. 
tying run aboard on a free pass. And Grissom will pinch hit for Giovanola. Marquise Grissom hitting 259 on the year. This is his fourth pinch hit appearance. He's 0 for 3. But just tearing his old teammates up. 25 for 45 on the year. 556 average with a homer and six RBIs. We'd like to add to that right here. Leaper holds Blouser close. Jeff, 8 out of 13 in stolen bases on the season. Broken back grounder. Could be two, but a drop at second. And the umpire at second base, Jerry Lane, says that Grizzolanik was taking the ball out of his glove to throw it. So Blouser is out. Grissom is the runner at first with two down. Well, I'll tell you what, they loused up a double play earlier in the game, and it cost him a run, and they loused one up here. And he was taking the ball out. I think that's a good call. Blouser, boy, he plays hard. He's having a bad year, but look at him go in. Mm -hmm. You could see Grizzolanik watching Jeff, too, yeah. when he was taking the ball out of his glove. That distracted him. Hellyard's going to pinch run at first base for Grissom, who's got a thigh bruise. That's one of the reasons he's not in the lineup today. And Bobby doesn't want to take a chance on him making it worse. And that's why Belliard's in there. And Polonia has a chance here to duplicate something he's only done against Leapers. The only left he's ever hit a homer off of. So maybe good again right here. Win the ball game. I think Rafi will go into clubhouse later and tell Marquise. Say something to him about pinch running for him. Oh, he's a, tell his grandchildren I once ran for one of the fastest <laughs> men in baseball. Low curve for a strike. I don't think Raphael will be challenging him to any foot races, though. No, just talk, you know, mm -hmm. sort of like us. Two outs, tying run at first. Off the plate, down the line, fair ball toward the bullpen. Run, Rafi, run. He'll stop at third. A two-out double for Polonia. Tying run at third, winning run at second. He gets more hits like this. That's about five or six already for him. It'd be deadly on Astroter. You know, from that angle, too, you could tell how he just all but, all but took the ball right out of Lakers' glove. Already his sixth double in 45 at bats as a Brave. Now it's up to Mike Devereaux, who doubled his last time up and scored the tying run in the ninth. And he takes outside for ball one. Devereaux has faced Leaper before in the American League, but drew a couple of walks. Leaper can blame only himself for the walk, but he has had bad pitching luck in the inning. The hit was shaky and the defense worse. Belliard at third. Polonia at second. Another breaking ball and Devereaux. Comes up empty one and one. Leapers working from the stretch. The one one outside two and one. Now, in this situation, Sean Barry at third base, no reason to guard the line because a base hit either way is going to win the ball game, especially with Polonia's speed at second base. So he doesn't have to guard the line. Two one pitch is high. Three and one. First base open. And switch hitting Chipper Jones on deck. No activity in the exposed bullpen. Brad Woodall throws in the Braves pin in case they tie it. 3-1 pitch. Curve. Got him to go after it and he foul tipped it. It's a full count. That might have been ball four. I don't think Mike has to worry about him busting him inside. Everything has had a bend to it. Payoff pitch. 
Breaking ball up the middle, off the glove. Tying run is in. Here comes Colonia. He is safe. And the Braves win it. It took them 10 innings, but it's the 25th time this year that the Braves have rallied to win in their last at bat. Five to four in their last home game of the year. He hit it in the perfect spot. Right back with ball. Look how close Leaper came to getting that ball. But he didn't. And once it got to the outfield, you knew it was all over. And the Braves have done it again. And they leave a big crowd happy on the final home day of the year. Totals and highlights after this. Here are your totals for Atlanta 5, 7, and 1 with 6 left. For Montreal 4, 10, and 1 with 5 left. Pedro Borbon gets the win. He's 2-2. Two two. Dave Leeper, the loser, is 0-2. Time of the game, 3 hours, 8 minutes. 45,461 paid to see it. A total of 2,562,000 for the Braves on the year. Our AutoZone player of the game, Mike Devereaux, who came through with two hits late in the ball game, a double in the ninth. He scored the tying run to send it in extra innings, and then a game winner in the tenth. Braves 25 times this year have won ball games in their last at bat, and they send this big crowd home happy on their last regular season home game of the year, and they take the series from the Expos two games to one. Our next Braves broadcast is against the Phillies on Tuesday night. It'll be John Smoltz against Paul Quantrill. Our broadcast starts at 7.30 here on TBS. Hope you'll be with us then. And again, thanks to all our crew for a job well done all season long, and we look forward to perhaps another year coming up. There you see, boy, that's an ugly group right there. Whew. But for Skip, Pete, Don, and our coordinating producer, Glenn Diamond. It's Joe Simpson. Glad you were with us today. Good evening, everybody. Sports Television into the 21st century, this has been an exclusive presentation of Turner Sports.